Hello everyone, my name is Abby and I am going to be walking you through the Yeast Orphan Genome Project um, lab modules and I'm going to start off with module 1 and I am going to open the document um, Word doc version of it um, and they also have a PDF version and then there's the guide underneath that you can read and follow along with as well um, and that's the guide that I am basing this off of. So the first thing that we're going to do is open the SGD or the Saccharomyces genome database and you can just search SGD in Google and it should be one of the first things that comes up. I am then going to put my gene which is MEC1 into the search bar and it'll come up and that's the gene that I'm just using um, just because I know it is a well-known gene and it's going to likely have all of the answers to be able to put in. So I put my gene name in. I'm going to change the color so that you can see the text clearly. And I am going to go and get the description from the database. And with this information, you kind of need to take it upon yourself to dissect and figure out what it means um, because it's going to be vastly different for each person's different type of gene. Then I'm going to scroll down to the sequence section, which has information about um, where it is on the chromosome, base pairs, amino acids, and find the coordinates, which would be um, how long, um, how, where in terms of base pairs it is on that chromosome. And then I'm going to go and look at the chromosome number which it says at the top there, and uh, my gene is on chromosome number two. And then for gene size calculations, so your first DNA coordinate is the first base pair that the gene starts with, and the last DNA coordinate um, is the last base pair that your gene segment ends with. So you can subtract the two to determine the base pairs in between that, that would make up the length of your gene. And sorry for the jump here, I forgot to do the DNA sequence, so I kind of went back and did it. So we're going to go back to the SGD, um, and under the summary section again, we're going to go to sequence, and then click on the genomic DNA, and that'll open up uh, this text box that has the uh, base pairs for your gene segment. And we're just going to copy and paste that into our worksheet. And I am going to debold that and put it in the font Courier New. Um, it just makes it look cleaner. All the letters are the same, so it's kind of easier to look at when you're looking at um, DNA, amino acid stuff. So now we're going to go under the protein section. And we're going to find the protein length in amino acids, which is 2,368. And then the question below that is asking, does the length make sense with your calculated DNA sequence length? So in terms of that, you want to think of um, how long your sequence is in terms of amino acids, how long it is in terms of base pairs. You know, three base pairs make up one codon for one amino acid, and kind of take that information from there. Next, we are going to look for our molecular weight, which is under the protein section again as well. And I'm just going to copy and paste that again. And the isoelectric point. And the isoelectric point is a pH when the molecule has no electrical charge. And now we are going to look for our protein sequence, which um, you, we can find the same way as we did our DNA under the sequence se section, and we're just going to select for protein instead. And then we are, we'll copy and paste that sequence. And 
then um, I'm going to make it Courier New again, and you don't have to do that. That's just a per personal preference. Um, and your sequences may be bigger or smaller than mine. It just depends on your gene as well. So now we are going to start working with NCBI BLAST, um, which is going to compare our protein sequence to the protein sequences in the database. So we're going to go to the top of the page and click on the protein tab and then go to the bottom of the page and select the BLAST at NCBI link. So this is what it looks like. Typically, if you just pulled it up, you would have to put a sequence in there, um, but ours was linked to the page, so we don't have to put in any other information. And then our database is set to the non-redundant protein sequence. And we're not going to change that. We're going to leave it the same. We're going to change it in a little bit, though. And then I think you're supposed to click the first blast. I clicked the second one the first time around, and it was taking a really long time to load, so I went back and clicked the first one. Um, and it's not that this can't take a really long time to load. This took me about five minutes to get the um, results to load. And there we go, and that's what the page looks like once uh, your results have loaded. So now we are going to look for a um, organism that is not in the same uh, species. Um, it can be in the same family as um, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, but we want one that is um, not Saccharomyces cerevisiae. And with that, we're also going to be looking at our e-value. And for our e-value, we want something between 0 and 1 times 10 to the negative third. The lower the e-value um, it is, the less likely there is an evolutionary relationship that is making them similar. And it is more likely that random chance is why they are similar. So if you have an e-value very close to 0, that means it's very likely that the gene sequence that came up in the BLAST results um, is because they are evolutionarily related and have diverged at some point. Another thing that we are also going to be looking at is the score, which is calculated by the sum of substitutions, uh, like a mismatch between amino acids being compared, and gap scores, which consider deletions and insertions that would make the two compared sequences dissimilar. So I'm scrolling through, I'm looking for um, an organism that is not Saccharomyces cerevisiae um, and that has an appropriate e-value, so I'm going to use this one. It's Saccharomyces paradoxus, and it's going to take you to this page when you click on it. And one thing that you do want to be careful of is if you scroll up, you get the species and gene that came up before you, and if you scroll down, it will take you to the one that was below what you selected. So sometimes that can be confusing, especially if sequences are short. So my gene name as well is again MEC1, and then my organism is Saccharomyces paradoxus. And I'm sorry for the poor spelling. And then our alignment length is 2,368. Our score is 4,496 bits. And our E value is 0. So now we're just going to copy and paste our alignment. So uh, what this alignment is showing is we have our 
query, which is our protein sequence, and we have our subject, which is what we are comparing our alignment to. Um, we also have these numbers on the side, um, and those indicate what number amino acid it is um, in the protein. I hope that this video was helpful and thanks for watching. For more information, go to yeastorphanproject.com or check out our YouTube page. This video was funded in part by NSF. Thanks for watching.